Microsoft has joined the attack against Nvidia. Everybody is going after Nvidia's 70% margins and Microsoft might actually have the best approach. We're gonna talk about that today and a little bit more. First, I wanna welcome you to Ruben Tech, the only channel on all of the internet that meets at the intersection of tech, politics, and finance. Please subscribe and hit that like button down below. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, you have to understand what NVIDIA's moat is. NVIDIA's biggest moat is not its hardware. It is CUDA. CUDA is NVIDIA's biggest moat, okay? Jensen Wong has stated this time and time again. On this channel, I've covered the AI wars from uh, USA against China. I've covered it in detail over the past year, right? And every time I talk about Jensen Wong, he says the same thing. He says, if we want to win this war, we must get the Chinese hooked on our standards. The hardware does not matter. Okay. And when he says that, he is absolutely correct. Now, I'm not commenting on if we're going at this. I personally think the AI war is stupid. I think we should be working with China, not against them. You can comment on that down below. However, if if you are into the AI war, uh, he is exactly right with what he's saying, okay? Because standards, especially when they're proprietary, matter more than the hardware they run upon. And why is that, okay? Well, first of all, these are not open source. CUDA is not open source. This toolkit is more than a toolkit. It's an entire ecosystem. And what it does is it gives you tools so that you are more productive, that you can develop your apps faster, that gives you all this stuff that saves you time and money. Okay. But the problem is, is this proprietary. So you can't change it at all and make it yours. You're stuck within NVIDIA's guidance. NVIDIA controls every aspect of this, okay? And what they do is they make things so easy, but you don't know it, they put hooks into you when you use it, okay? And then if you know IT, you're, you are very familiar with this. We call it vendor lock-in. And CUDA has extremely strong vendor lock-in because it makes everything. It's been developed over two decades. Okay, nobody else has anything comparable to it. And so it makes everything so much easier and it just sticks this hooks into everybody who uses it. And then when they try to pull away, right? If they're like, hey, I wanna get out of CUDA, it's gonna rip the meat out and the bone. It's like, oh, you know, it's gonna rip you apart, okay? And I hate to be graphic, but it's, it's what it is. And there are companies like NVIDIA and like Oracle that this is their specialty, vendor lock-in. They'll target these poor, I don't mean poor, but you know, in a way it's like these enterprises, they don't get it. You know, maybe they don't, they don't understand this type of stuff. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll use Oracle. And Oracle's like, <laughs> sucker, put their hooks in them. And then every single year, they just keep raising prices and prices. And this enterprise can't get away from them. It. It's impossible. So then they're stuck with Oracle for the next few decades. This is NVIDIA's greatest defense. It's moat. And Microsoft is going to attack it head on. And that's like, Right, so this is bigger. This is bigger than Google attacking Nvidia. I cut, I made a video about Google and Huawei going after Nvidia. East and West, Google, uh, uh, Nvidia under attack from Google and Huawei. However, this is bigger than Google's attack. Again, because like Jensen Wong said, it is attacking the standards. Okay, it's not attacking the hardware, it's attacking the standards and the standards are more important because that's how you get people hooked. And so what is Microsoft doing? Well, first, what they're doing is something like this. I want to show you this open source library because this is kind of where the idea started. It's called Zluda. Zluda is an open source library that is a drop-in replacement for CUDA on non-NVIDIA GPUs. Zluda allows running unmodified CUDA applications using non-NVIDIA GPUs with near-native performance. What does all, all that gobbledygook mean if you're not technical? It means that you can be using CUDA, you can be stuck in their environment, but you, instead of going away, you don't have to have the hooks ripped out. You can keep using CUDA and take your code and run it on AMD chips. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't have to use NVIDIA's chips. I don't have to pay the 70% NVIDIA tax and I still get the benefits of CUDA, right? And this is 100% illegal. 
<laughs> it's already been requested to be taken down by AMD. Uh, but the thing about open source is, of course, what are they going to do? They're just going to keep re-uploading the library, right? Under different people who uh, found this and stuff like that. So this is, I'll go into more why of why this is illegal the ex exact distinction but if you wanted to use it and you're just like one person it's not a big deal but obviously a large company especially these companies that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars they're not going to use it because they don't want to be sued out of existence i mean that's why amd actually recommended actually requested this to be taken down because they don't want to be sued also even though they're not encouraging people to use it it still breaks all the end user licensing agreements okay but microsoft Microsoft is very smart, okay? And it comes down, so before I introduce what Microsoft says, I wanna go to this right here. This is the Google versus Oracle case, uh, Alphabet versus Oracle, the decision that was made. This was a 10 year long decision. Oracle bought Java, and Java was mostly open source, but there was a small portion of it that wasn't. And Oracle really exploited that small portion, right? That's what Oracle does. In fact, the only reason they bought Java was in the hope of just licensing everybody to death and just, again, getting another hook into someone. But Google foresaw that this could happen. And so what they did is they went in and they took all of the APIs in Java and they kept them the same and they rewrote all of the functionality for every API. And so what does this mean? It basically means if you're a developer, you can write Java code 100% and you could use the Google runtime and you would think you're writing Java, but they're actually running their libraries in the back to translate it to something else. But it runs exactly like Java. And Oracle said, no way, there's no way you can do that. They sued them, this case went on for 10 years and ultimately, what happened was the Supreme Court avoided a decision on copyrightability. And they did because this would have been a big thing. If API code is copyrightable, I, that would be crazy. The entire world would be upended. And I, I really mean that because we have APIs that are print, right? And okay, so what does it do? It prints something. Okay, I have something else. I want to write a print statement. You can't. I copyrighted it what you copyrighted the word print i mean it's really ridiculous i'll do a video on that later but anyways the supreme court did not decide on that what they did was they assumed even if it's copyrightable would what google did be okay and they said yes okay they said it would be covered under fair use because it's such a transformative work so what they did was they created this entire new uh, uh, ecosystem called Android, toolkits, all this other stuff where Java was mainly on like these old dumb phones, desktops, laptops, etc. Right. So it was a transformative work. And in addition, Google wrote millions, I believe they wrote like 15 million new lines of code or something. Right. And so all they did was all they were using were these headers. Right. So they wrote like 15 million lines of codes and most of the headers that they replaced were open source. And I remember in a, in a in the uh, trial, it came down to like these headers that were maybe like a thousand to five thousand lines of text out of like 15 million lines of code, you know. And it's like, oh my gosh, if the Supreme Court gets this wrong, because they usually get everything wrong with technology, this is going to be a huge deal. But they didn't. They got it right. Not right enough because they should have said it's not copyrightable, but they said we'll determine that later. Okay. So now you got that. Now we're going to go over to Microsoft. What my, oh, sorry, where's Microsoft? Here's Microsoft. What Microsoft's doing is they're developing a similar type toolkit, okay, to break NVIDIA's CUDA dominance, slashing inferencing costs with AMD's GPUs. Uh, what they're doing is they're going ahead and they're rewriting the APIs in the same way so that when you write the, the code in CUDA, you think you're sending it off to, to the CUDA compiler, but it's not. It's going to Microsoft's compiler and it's getting compiled into code that can run on AMD's ROCKM system. Understand, this is a large task. Remember, I just said for Java that Google had to write like 15 million lines of code. But if you were able to do this, we can see here, uh, according, let me get this in first. However, according to a high ranking Microsoft employee, it's reported that the tech giant has developed toolkits that allow the firm to run CUDA code on the AMD GPUs by translating it into a ROCKM compatible version. Just so you can see from the article that what I'm saying, you know, kind of get a backup for it. So, if you could do this, right, it means that people that are using CUDA right now, they can just keep using it as is, just like us Android developers that were using Java, 
Like, I honestly didn't know that was going on. You just thought, oh, I'm using Java. No, you're not. Okay, so you'd be like, oh, I'm using CUDA. No, you're not. When it's compiled, I mean, you are, but essentially you're not because when it's compiled, it's not using a CUDA compiler. It's using a special Microsoft tool. And then it's that that's taken it, okay? And it's taken all the API calls and Microsoft is, is rewriting those in the background with this toolkits. And it's gonna produce code that can go ahead and it'll be able to run on AMD system. So you don't have to leave. Now, I wanna be crystal clear about something right now. I wanna be crystal clear about something. I cannot imagine that this is a done deal, i.e. There, there can be, I don't wanna say no way. I don't wanna be, you know, cause people do amazing things. But CUDA has been around for decades, okay? And it's a huge ecosystem. So I wouldn't think that this is a done project, okay? But if Microsoft can do this, okay? I just understand. Let me make this crystal clear. AMD's chips are near the same performance, sometimes some instances even better for inferencing, okay? And they cost significantly less. Jensen is, he's swimming in all the cash from his 70% Jensen tax. The 70% Jensen tax is what's driving NVIDIA's insane valuation, it's insane revenue growth. When I say insane valuation, I don't mean that it's not deserved. It is deserved by the type of revenue they're getting. However, if that 70% gets halved, if it gets you know reduced even by 20%, all of a sudden, you have to sell that many more GPUs, and the market is not going to like that, okay? They like that 70% tax because it is just sweet, fat cash. However, now you're using, you're using CUDA. You can't get away from it. The meat hooks are too far in you. But Microsoft says, hey, you come to our cloud. You can stay on CUDA, but we can run your code for 70% cheaper, and it's not going to be seventy percent. Uh, let's, but let's say they offer a substantial discount, because uh, of course Microsoft's going to take some of that. Um, so they offer a substantial discount. You can run your code for twenty percent cheaper, and it'll work just as well. What are you going to say? Are you going to say no? No, of course not. Right? You're going to you're going to be all over that. Everyone's going to be all over that. Right? It is. Oh my gosh. You know. And think about Microsoft. What this does for them. Because I haven't heard that Google and Amazon are doing such a thing. Though, now that I read this, I would have to think that they are. I would absolutely have to think that they are. Because these companies know what each other are doing. Just like uh, Microsoft and Amazon are releasing their own TPUs now because they've seen how good Google's are. There's no way that Alphabet and Amazon would be like, no, uh, Microsoft's going to be the only one to have this. Okay, because this would drive tremendous business to Microsoft's cloud. And of course, it would be great for AMD. But just think about it. Microsoft has just stacks of AMDs in their cloud. And they probably would just be ordering so many more because, of course, people are going to be like, hey, yeah, I'll save 20, 25%. Why not? You know, I don't have to change my environment. Okay. So that, this right here, oh my gosh, it could be huge. And of course, Microsoft, just so you know, I would never imagine that they would open source it. Okay, I just couldn't see them doing it because it would give them such a leg up on everybody else. But if they did, if they did, it would rock the world. Okay, if they open sources, which they won't, just think about in China, all the people in China that use CUDA right now. The reason that the Chinese government stopped importing, uh, stopped their companies from using NVIDIA's chips is not because they think the chips are bad or they don't want to get hooked on the chips. It's because they don't want their developers using CUDA. When DeepSeek went to make their second version of DeepSeek, their second release, they were having problems with this proprietary CUDA code that they're writing. They were having problems with these processes that they ran under the CUDA environment, right? And trying to port it to Huawei's accelerators. And they had to get an entire team of Huawei engineers over to do this. Right, and they the highest levels of government, you know, have been apparently have been informed of this, right? Of how difficult it was to move away from that, and so the, you know, and they heard they obviously had to hear what Jensen was saying, where Jensen's like, hey, if America wants to win the war, just give them our chips. They're going to use our standards, and once they once they have the standards, right, they'll never get away. So imagine if Microsoft did this, 
Everybody could just keep using CUDA, but they wouldn't have to have, they wouldn't have to have NVIDIA's chips. They could use AMD. Now for China, it wouldn't be as big of a deal because they wouldn't want to get reliant on, on, on AMD. But for America, it would be huge for the West, right? Absolutely huge, okay? And so that's what I got for you guys today, right? I mean, we talked about before how NVIDIA is greatly under attack by Google and the TPU front. And so, I mean, I guess I, I could talk a little bit more about that because there's been more information real quick. I'll just have to say like, um, I, I read an article. In fact, I think I have it up on my browser still. Let me bring this over for you guys. I think uh, I still have it up because I was researching this earlier that Google's uh, estimate would be uh, $900 billion for their AI chips. Just what their AI chips would be worth the Google's valuation by, by 2026 and 2028, I thought it was, uh, $900 billion it would add, okay? So think about that. Um, what, what they're looking at here is that Google is expecting to have uh, five to seven million alphabet TPUs in 2027 and 2028. That's 12 million TPUs if you take the average of those two numbers, right, over two years. Now, the majority of those, of course, are gonna be used in the Google Cloud. A lot of them are gonna be used by Google. But we know from the deals with Anthropic, we know from the deal with OpenAI in the summer, which nobody's talking about, but obviously that was for Google's TPUs. And we know from the deal with Facebook, where Google said that they actually are considering shipping these chips directly to Facebook, that people are ordering these chips by the boatload. And the reason they're doing that is because they're so much more efficient, up to 45 to 60% more efficient, energy efficient than NVIDIA's chips. And, you know, I mean, yeah, again, once again, oh, uh, Alphabet stack is a completely open source. So there's no hooks to keep you in there. Now that's a plus and a minus because if you're in CUDA, you're gonna be like, oh, this, this library is harder, right? So if you're a smaller company, you're probably not gonna do this. But for all the big boys, Meta, OpenAI, and those guys, they're not using CUDA anyways because they don't want, I'm not saying they're not using it at all, but they don't wanna be locked into CUDA. So they're fine with moving to different stacks because NVIDIA has extremely high margins and they are definitely coming under attack. That's what I got for you today. All of you out there, have a great day.